This is Howard the Mechanic, giving another home set update out here in the creek. This particular update is going to be about a Big Tex trailer I just purchased. So this is going to be an update and a review on it. It's something I just purchased. Purchased it about a week ago. Today was the first day to actually really use it and to put it to a test. Give you some backdrop to it. Uh, I was looking for a new trailer. You know, something to put my tractor on. You know, I originally was looking at every type of trailer you can think of. Figured that would make it easy to get my tractor on there by myself and haul cars with and the whole nine yards. Decided on a, on a tilt trailer. Originally, I was looking at 60-40 uh, tilt trailers, and I decided at the end of the day to go with this full full tilt trailer. I decided to go with Big Tex. I went out and kicked the tires on, you know, a couple of the off-brand trailers. The trailer that I owned prior to purchasing this one was just some shit off-brand trailer. Wasn't very satisfied with it. It lasted about five years, and just all the welds on it were bad. I mean, it looked like some, something made in a high school welding shop. Not beating them up, by the way. I was there, too, you know. But before I spent any money, I wanted to get something heavy-duty. I wanted to get something that's going to last a while. Some of the off-brand ones are about $800 cheaper than this full tilt, and the welds are shit on them. Went and looked at them. The welds aren't any good on it. I mean, just go down the list. You know, the, the pennies they cut, the corners on, you know, just it's it's not worth $800. bucks. you know you are already spending $5,000. You know, this particular trailer was $5,800, a little bit more than I wanted to spend, obviously. But at the end of the day, I decided to go ahead and get this Big Tex one because all the welds are good on it. Went and looked at a couple of them. The welds are good. They're heavy duty. You know, the this particular Big Tex trailer, probably the, the frame on it is at least another inch bigger than any of the other ones in that kind of price range. So at the end of the day, by weight, probably the Big, te big Tex trailer is the better value. And bring that up, uh, one downside of this trailer is, if you want to look at it that way, if you have it like me, I have a three-quarter ton Chevy gas pickup truck that I'm pulling it with. And this trailer is with this addition to this 3,500 pound trailer, you know, I'm going to be towing to 11,000 pounds, you know. So trailer pulled good. Even being 3,500 pounds, it pulled a great, pulled straight. So there was no issue actually with the extra weight of the trailer. If anything, I think this trailer, even being an extra 2,000 pounds, actually pulled better than my lighter trailer with the same piece of equipment on it, just because it's heavy duty. And, you know, I just, I, my truck wasn't fighting the trailer, if that makes any sense. Wasn't overloaded. And to bring that up, I originally was going to buy a 10,000 pound trailer, but you know, there wasn't that much price difference in my opinion. You know, when I was, you could go from a 10,000 to 14,000 pound trailer. There's not much price difference. First thing I don't like about this trailer is the same thing I don't like about any of the other brands is I don't like this new couplers they have on them. If you want to call it, you know, they, they have these adjustable couplers with the two bolts so you can put different tongues on them. Basically you can, uh, you know, you can switch it from a ball to a all kind of weird shit. Just being a redneck, I have every type of drop hitch and ball to everything you can think of. So in my case, I'd rather it be a straight tongue. The other thing you'll notice about this trailer is it has a drop tongue, meaning the actual tongue is cut and then re-welded, you know, about six inches higher. And I didn't like that originally, thinking it might be the weak point, just the same way that all the tongues are on these things, these new ones. You know, it's pretty heavy duty. I have to admit, I looked in there, and that's so the first thing I looked at when I looked at trailers to see how heavy. They put a big piece of steel in there, pretty confident in it, you know. I mean, I think the tongue, the actual, I think the actual coupler on it would be the weak point, uh, even more than the step. I do realize why they have the step now. Um, this trailer is way low to the ground compared to other trailers I've owned. I mean, when I actually looked under there after I got it loaded, you know, I'm probably like, I got shackles that are about five inches off the ground. So it's kind of a catch-22 with this trailer. I don't know if it's just because it's a tilt trailer that's like that. I don't remember my other trailer being that low to the ground, uh, but I already sold it, so I don't have it to compare to, you know. So I may be lying about that. When I originally decided to purchase the tilt trailer, I originally was going to purchase uh, what I would consider a 60-40 split, meaning the deck uh, only about 60% of the deck tilts back. For example, if it's a 20-foot trailer, you have four foot of flat deck in the front and the rear 16 foot tilt and i called uh, big tech to ask them if they had any knowledge of people loading tractors with like shredders on me obviously you have a bunch of shit weight hanging off the back of it and they said oh yeah everything will work great that's not the case uh, either they're lying or i'm wrong even with this full tilt when i put my tractor on the trailer i have to pull way far forward and then get off the tractor and go lock the bed back down to get back on the tractor and back it up so and, and do all a bunch of weird shit it is nice i don't regret buying the tilt trailer as far as it being a tilt it was nice uh, i went and did six hours of shredding today with it, it pulled great the whole way there the brakes worked great on it uh, it was nice when I was tired and I was done working. I was just able to pull the, just drive the equipment back up on the deck. I didn't have to get the ramps out and fuck with all that shit. So there is a big benefit. I don't regret buying the tilt trailer in some respects as far as the tilt uh, of it. This is a pretty heavy duty trailer. I did like the way they did the light boxes in the rear. This came with all LED lighting. It's heavy duty light boxes. They could have saved a couple of pennies and put some shit metal back there. They didn't. Very heavy duty. The D-rings that are on this are actually welded to the actual tilt deck not the regular frame of the trailer uh, this one does have stake boxes all the way down full trailer length uh, if you do have those d-rings if you want to keep something uh, actually strapped to the uh, actual deck itself me I, I like keeping it actually to the frame the tilt works easy 
just has a uh, they actually did it in the shape of a foot pedal it's the easiest one i've seen some of the other trailers I looked at the hydraulic ram has all kind of weird shit going on to where you have to have it switch a knob to turn it from tilt go back down all this uh, you know this one's not like that this one's just more more or less does have a shock on it but it's a gravity shock works good deck right off the showroom floor is pretty much balanced even the deck goes back down like it's supposed to so there's no issues there with the deck i can see that being an issue in the future it's not a, it's not rocket science if that happens so What's satisfied with the tilt portion of the trailer? This one does have bolt-on fenders, something I'll probably never use. You know, when I looked at some of the other trailers, I noticed kind of a new thing is these quote-unquote weld-on fender, uh, drive-over fenders. Um, I don't like it. A couple of them that I looked at, uh, maybe you could drive it over. I don't like it. If you're having to drive over a fender with a of a tractor or a piece of equipment, you, your trailer ain't wide enough, you know? And so, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, in my case, I do a lot of uh, shredding in rural areas, and that's going to be a concern with the trailer. Most areas that I go shredding in are in rural areas. They're on a farm somewhere. You know, I'm there to box plate or driveway, fix the potholes and to shred or whatever. Maybe all trailers like that. I don't know. You know, uh, I don't remember it being five inches off the ground. So this one, I'm going to have a little bit of issue on some of my customers. because I'm not sure I'd, I'd be able to drag this thing, especially with the extra weight. If I'd be able to drag the sled down somebody's rough driveway without the shackles dragging in the sand, you know, so that's going to be kind of a learning curve. Did come with heavy duty axles. Did come with a nice deck. This one has a coated deck on it. It has some traction tape basically adhered to the actual wood on the deck. Supposedly, this is supposed to help uh, with traction. You could see that happening on a wet deck. You know, you got this thing tilted and you're trying to pull up a light car. It may not actually pull up the car. So, you know, this may be an option you want to. I didn't pay extra for it. This particular trailer just already had it. Kind of a COVID 19 special. It was already on this particular trailer and I drove three hours round trip to go get it. You know, so I got that free, I guess. Did have to spend 240 bucks for a spare tire and wheel. This trailer did come with a heavy duty jack. Uh, I did like it. It is spring loaded pin. This one I also like about it is it has a little bit longer tongue than most trailers. I do like that. It has room to put a chain box in this one did not come with a chain box but i'll be putting a chain box of some sort or it has enough room there you could probably uh, uh, mount trailer toolbox inside the tongue you know so that may be something i do i like it bear on this one in particular is mounted on the front of the trailer which i like instead of the rear so i did like that about it the spare tire is hanging over the tongue it's the the, the ass end of the trailer is built heavy duty uh on the ramps uh the portion that tilts down and touches the ground it's real heavy duty i originally was worried about that being cheesy it's not cheesy at all it's heavy duty steel i don't think it'll ever be an issue with that bending or getting warped or anything like that but for the most part i'm, I'm satisfied with the trailer you know other than it being so damn low to the ground catch 22 you know i don't know if that has anything to do with it just being a tilt and they're for all like that by the way this isn't a hit piece on big techs or anybody else who had good customer service uh, when i went there to purchase it they made it pretty easy to purchase i mean it was a high dollar you know by the time i got the hell out of there about 6500 dollars so i got the hell out of there but it is what it is you know we're gonna start dragging this thing all over the place so if you see me i'm trying to make trying to make money with this damn thing so i make the payment on it if you like the uh, video hit the subscribe button you got a rude comment you know leave that shit god damn it you son of a bitch.